welcome back. So in this lecture, you're going to learn how to create an email list custom audience. Now, if you spend any time in the business world or in the digital marketing world, you'll know just how powerful and important having an email list is. Some people have their entire livelihood based on it. Now, in Facebook ads, we can actually use that email list and then target our ads directly to those buyingly willing people. Very powerful. And if we don't want to do that because we're already marketing to them, we can use them to create lookalikes. At any rate, we want to have them as an audience in our Facebook ads. Without a doubt, let's learn how to do that. Let's dive in. So we are in the audience section and if you haven't been following from the beginning of this section, it's very easy to find here. You go to business tools, go down and you click on audiences. And we've already done our uh, website custom audience, right? So now we're going to do our email list custom audience and this is super easy. And there are two ways to do this and I'm going to show you both ways. So what you want to do is click on create audience up here and then we're going to choose custom audience. We're going to go through lookalike audience later and we are not going to be doing any special ad audience because special ads are for those who are selling, for example, real estate or, or credit or insurances, etc. More high uh, value ads and having more high value audiences. So they get some special features, but the chances are you're not going to be in that group. So we're not going to be doing any special ads, right? We're going to focus on these. So we're going to uh, click on custom audience here. Now, in order for us to create an email list uh, custom audience, we need to go to the right here and click on customer list, right? We're going to click on that customer list. Now, from here, there are a couple of things you can do. First of all, you can create your own customer list. And to do that, you can download this template and there's going to be a tutorial here. Uh, here we go here on how to do that. The values that you want to add in, you just create a CSV file and you can see the formatting guideline, but there's no need to do that. That's going to be way, way overkill at this point. What we're going to do is simply import our email list. Very rarely do you need to do this manually. So in order to do that, there are two ways. Way number one, which is the simplest way of all, is to click down here where it says import from MailChimp. Now the caveat with this, of course, is that you need to have your um, email list on MailChimp, of course. If you don't, don't worry about it. I'm going to show you how to do it otherwise, right? So starting off, I'm going to show you how to do it from MailChimp. All you do is click on import from MailChimp. Then you're going to have to log in there. So click on log in to MailChimp. And then I'm just going to log in and now you need to authorize Facebook custom audiences, right? We're connecting to Facebook custom audience. So you need to give them the right to do so because MailChimp isn't just going to do send away your information without your allowance, right? So read through this, make sure that you agree most of the time. I mean, this is why you're doing this, right? And then just click on allow. So then this is going to load for a little bit and then you choose your list. Now we have multiple uh, email lists on our MailChimp account. So in here, I'm going to use the import convert kit because I know we have a couple of hundred people on this old list at least, I think. And then we're going to go ahead and click on create audience, right? It's that easy. And now we're going to give it a name and we are going to call this MailChimp uh, custom audience. There we go. And then I'm just going to go ahead and click on next. I don't need to add in a description. And from this point it's already done. What they're asking is, hey, do you want to create an ad now using this audience? Or do you want to expand your audience and create a lookalike, right? Now we don't want to do any of that stuff yet. So we're going to go down to the right and click on done. And now, well, we have created our MailChimp custom audience. So then that's all done. Now it says availability, accept terms. Now before we can use it, you can see on availability, it says accept terms. So if I go ahead and click here, it says requirement for using custom audiences. It says to use custom audience, you must be an advertiser, an agency or data prov provider acting on behalf of an advertiser or marketing API or custom audiences, API partners, right? So basically, what this is saying is that you are not allowed to grab all of the data of other people without their allowance, right? There is something known as GDPR, General Data Protection Regulation, which basically says that in Europe, the people living in Europe, they own their own information. So for example, I live in Europe. So if I visit your website, you are not allowed to save down data and information about me without having my allowance. So whenever you visit a site, that is why you're going to see these cookies uh, pop up. Because if you are saving down cookies about someone without their uh, acceptance, well, then you are going to be in trouble. The same thing goes with when it comes to saving down their email. 
they need to have an approval in, before anyone can save down anyone's email. So what they're asking is, hey, are we sure that we have the approval of everyone on this email list to use it? Because now we are bringing all of that information and putting it in Facebook and we cannot do that without these people's approval, right? But if we do have their approval, which we of course have, you can see it on the website little box that says, well, I agree to the terms and conditions, etc." then that means that we can use them and we can add them to Facebook and then we can match our email list uh, together with the Facebook's audience and then find these people from our email list and then find them on Facebook. And this is very easy because most people are going to have, you know, the same email in their email list as they're going to have their email on Facebook. So it's very easy to match them and find them on Facebook. This isn't 100%. You're not going to find all of them, but you're going to find most of them, right? So basically what it says, advertisers who run ads on their browser are ultimately responsible for acknowledging their permission to share and use people's data. Meaning, this is your responsibility, it is not Facebook's responsibility, right? So of course, being sure that you've collected people's emails and with their permission, just click accept and then this one is ready to use as well. And now we've created this list from MailChimp. Now, what if you don't have a MailChimp? Then what are you going to be doing? Well, then all you need to do is upload a CSV or XLS document. So let me show you how to do this once again. We're going to go ahead and click on create audience, custom audience, and then we're going to uh, go to customer list again. But this time we are not going to be clicking on any of this. We're just going to click on next, right? So now it says, does your list include a column for customer value? So what is the customer value? Well, if you've ever been to MailChimp, for example, you're going to see that they have different stars that are rating different customers. So in order to understand a customer value, for example, in MailChimp, you're going to see the contact rating. So this is going to tell the value of the different customer because basically what it's saying that, hey, they are interacting a lot with your email or if you've been tracking, for example, that they have been buying a lot of the stuff that you are sending out in your email. Then they have a so-called high customer value or sometimes now it's lifetime customer value, right? Because that means that they are worth more than the others because they have a very high uh, chance of taking any action whenever you send them to anything. So basically what, what they're asking is, does your list include a column for customer value? Now this is going to be depending on what kind of list you're importing, if you've done it yourself, but we are going to import the list from elsewhere where it doesn't actually include the customer values. I'm going to press no for now, but you can uh, of course use yes if you do, right? And then we're going to click on next. And now all we're going to do is uh, upload that CSV file. And in order to do that, we need to export our email list from somewhere. So in this example, if you've been following our WordPress course, then you'll know that we use MailPoet when creating this website, this very website, right? So if I go to MailPoet, and then I go down to subscribers. And then from here, there's a button on the very top that says export. I'm going to click on export just like that. And then I just select the list that I want to export, right? So we have the homepage digital marketing and we also have a sidebar. So I'm just going to pick both of them, which is going to be all of our subscribers from here. And then I'm going to export them. And then it says list of fields to export. And we want the email, first name, last name, list status, and then global status. And then we can choose CSV or Excel file. But the most common is just to use a CSV file. For us, it doesn't matter because the system is going to do all the work for us anyway. But then I'm just going to go ahead and click on export. And then I'm just going to name this mail poet email list. I'm going to save it down. Now it's been downloaded. Let's head back. We're in here. I'm just going to go ahead and drag that one right in here. You can also just click on download list template and choose it manually. It doesn't matter. Right. So here it is. So then all we are going to do is go ahead and click on next. Now, if you did not use a CSV template, what you could also do is use copy and paste because you're going to have columns and data, right? Because these are comma separated values. You could just copy all of that and paste it in here, but that is kind of going the long road, right? But just so you know, you can do that. So then we're going to go ahead and name this. We're going to, well, mail poet email list is the perfect name. So we're going to click on next. So then it says, okay, we have one mapped and then there are some action needs on the other. So by looking here, I can see, okay, there's some things that it hasn't managed to properly map. And I can see that in the first column here, there are names, right? These are the first names. So I'm going to choose first names here. I can tell that this is my last name, for example. So 
and this is going to be last name. So I am just telling this what it is going to be mapping it as. I'm just adding in the value because it didn't have the value in itself. Sometimes when you export from somewhere, it's going to fix the, uh, the values perfectly itself and other times it's going to be problematic. So the only thing that was properly mapped in here was the email. So we needed to do the others ourselves. Here we can see the list status as subscribe, right? So we're going to see if there's anything like that in here do we need any form of list status no i'm not finding any so i'm just gonna stick to do not upload the list status there's a global status i'm just gonna choose to do not upload and then there's the list basically where did they come from so is there anything for that here no there's no that's not important information that we need so i'm not gonna upload this so the three uh, areas that I removed here was the list status that they're subscribed, the global status that if there's uh, unconfirmed or not, and then which list they came from. Remember, we combined two lists here. And then what we have mapped is that we have saved down people's email, right? That happened automatically. But then for the first name and the last name, we had to map those out ourselves, and we did. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and click on upload and create. And now it's been uploaded. The customer list has been successfully hashed and uploaded. I'm just gonna go ahead and click on done. We don't wanna create the lookalike or add or anything. Gonna click on done and look at that. So we've uploaded yet another email list. So we uploaded one from MailPoet, we uploaded one from MailChimp. And this is how you upload an email list and turn it into a custom audience. Now realize that whenever you have a customer list, from wherever it might be from, as long as it is in an Excel file or a CSV file, you can upload it this way. This is not bound to only email lists, right? So as long as you have a file with the customers that has the email, that has a, a first and last name, or even just the email works fine. You can upload it like this and turn it into an audience. Hope you enjoyed this. See you in the next lecture.